Hello Padres and welcome back. For today's notes we're going to be looking at the Doppler effect um, and how it deals with both sound and uh, light waves. So here we go. Um, first off I want you to play, pay close attention um, to this video and I'm going to ask you to describe what you see and what you hear in this video. Let's take Um, I would like you to um, write a few sentences, or at least think about a few sentences. Um, describe what you saw and what you heard. So take a few seconds, think about that. What did you see? What did you hear? All right, excellent. And can you think of the science behind why there was a change in sound? You should have heard a change in the sound as the, as the car was passing. Uh, so what's happening to the wave, do you think, to cause that change in sound? So think about that for a second. Okay. So um, I'd like you to recall, uh, when we're talking about sound waves, that um, the frequency is the kind of like the pitch or the tone. So if you have a low frequency, uh, we're talking about deep sounds, the bass in your car, Morgan Freeman, uh, we're talking like way down here, with these low frequency. So it's not wiggling very fast, we're talking about waves moving very slowly. And high frequency, uh, waves moving very quickly, which would look like this. Uh, these are your squeaky sounds, uh, bats, Mariah Carey, uh, it's kind of way up here. So we have different frequencies. We have low frequency, high frequency. So, um, using what we just talked about, what do you think the sound wave looked like and sounded like as the car was coming towards you? So as the car was coming this way, what, did, what do you think the wave, what did it sound like and what do you think the wave would have looked like based on what we just talked about? And as the car is passing you, same thing, what do you think the sound wave looked like and what do you think it sounded like? So um, you should have said what we hear. Um, here's a picture of me trying on a lovely hat in a thrift store. Um, as the car is approaching me, as the car is coming towards me, we hear me. And then after it passes, so here's a second picture with the car is passing me, it's still going to the right. Um, I hear mm. So it kind of goes me. So as it's coming towards me, it's nee, it's higher pitched. And as it passes, you hear the mm, and it's lower pitched. So coming towards you, there is a higher frequency. All right. And after it passes you, there's a lower frequency. So the sound wave is actually changing as the car passes you. All right. So why does this happen? So the sound wave from the horn or the car engine is really the same. And if you think about like a bug uh, in some water and the bug is you know, flapping its wings in the water, um, it's sending out waves in all directions. And so the waves are going out in all directions equally. And with the horn, the horn is making one sound and that sound is going out equally in all directions. However, if our bug in the water starts to swim or if our car horn or car engine starts to move, what happens is this. Uh, in the direction that it's moving, those waves are getting squished together. And the faster the bug swims, or the faster the car moves, the more squished together those waves will get. The waves on the opposite side, on the left of the object, those waves are spreading out because the object is moving away from the waves it's sending. So it's constantly sending out these waves because it's moving while it's sending them out. The waves are either getting squished or they're getting spread out. Right. So what this means is, if this motorcycle is making a noise and you're over here, the waves are getting squished on this side. So you hear the knee because it's a higher frequency. The waves are hitting you very quickly. And if you're the woman on the left, the motorcycle is going away from you. The waves are getting spread out. So you hear the hmm. It's much lower pitched, lower frequency. So even though the, even though the motorcycle is making one sound, the 
the person on the motorcycle is hearing one sound. It actually appears like it's sounding two different ways. Depending if you're, if the motorcycle is coming towards you, it's going to sound higher pitched. And if it's going away from you, like the woman, it's going to be lower pitched. So the actual def definition of the Doppler effect is the apparent change in frequency of a wave due to the relative motion of an object. So the frequency of the horn or the car actually is not changing. It's an apparent change. It appears that it's changing. And the reason it appears to be changing is because the object is moving. So once again, the person on the motorcycle is going to hear a different sound than the, the guy where the motorcycle is approaching and the woman where the motorcycle is leaving. So it's all three people are going to hear different sounds. One of them is the actual sound. It changes in the sound. And those changes are happening because the object is moving. All right, um, here is um, Sheldon in Big Bang Theory. Uh, he is dressed up as the Doppler effect. You can see the waves squish together and spread out. Uh, it's a pretty funny clip. Um, you can take a look at it uh, in the notes. Um, I'm not going to play it now, but you can watch it at your convenience. Um, we do see the Doppler effect in other places. Um, bats use echolocation. Um, and so if the um, insect is flying towards the bat, um, the frequency of the bat's uh, echolocation is going to change because the bug is coming towards it, the waves are bouncing, and it can actually detect those changes. Uh, the same thing is true with um, submarines using sonar or ships using sonar. Um, this is an ultrasound, I believe, and um, it also uses uh, Doppler effect, changes in motion. Uh, dolphins use it, also echolocation. Radar guns, that's how they determine your, uh, how fast you're going. Um, it's basically bouncing off. And so if you can tell if it's bouncing off towards you or if it's going away from you and bounces off. It can tell that. That's a kind of Doppler effect. And uh, weather patterns, they can use that to determine the direction of, of weather. So it doesn't just happen with sound waves. It also happens with visible light. Um, and we said before that light the light that we see, each color has a different frequency. So you can see red has a frequency of about 380 uh, terahertz. And then as we go to orange and yellow, the frequency is changing. So we also said below the red, we have infrared. We also have um, x ray uh, not X-rays, radio waves and microwaves on the far left. But we have ultraviolet over here. So we have violet. And then ultraviolet, and we said, like, for example, if you have infrared and you wiggle a little bit faster, the infrared turns to red. And if we can grab a red a white wave and wiggle a little bit faster with a little higher frequency, it would turn to orange and then yellow. And it would go through all the colors. The faster you wiggle it, it goes through all the colors. Until we get to violet, you go wiggle it a little bit faster, and it's going to turn into ultraviolet. So um, think about for a second. If the light source is moving towards you, what would happen to the frequency and the color of the light? So if you're standing still and the, the light is coming towards you, what's going to happen to the frequency of the light? And then what's going to happen to the color of the light? All right. um, so what's actually happening, if this is a light source and it's coming towards you, you would see the light would appear violet or more violet than it normally would. And if you're on this side um, and the object is moving away from you, you'd have a lower frequency, which is more towards the red side, and the colors would be more red than normal. And we actually use this to determine uh, that galaxies are moving away from us. And when we look up in the sky with telescopes and we look at galaxies and other stars, we can see that the colors of those galaxies are redshifted. And what that means is that these galaxies are moving away from us. So the light waves are getting stretched out. They're moving away, so they're stretching. Um, here's a video uh, with Mr. Anderson. Uh, he kind of goes through and talks about exactly the same thing I just talked about. Um, you might find it uh, useful to hear another, um, another voice talking about it. So take a look at this. Um, and if you're in college prep physics, this will be the end of today's lesson of the Doppler effect.
Um, if you're in honors, I'd like you to stick around. We're going to go over some uh, mathematical examples dealing with the Doppler effect. So once again, college prep done. Honors, we're going to carry on. <clears throat> so it's actually uh, for honors is not very difficult mathematically. It's just difficult um, in terms of making sure that you're putting the right thing in the right spot. So this F right here on the right is the actual frequency. This is the frequency the motorcycle will be making. F prime, the F little mark here, this is the frequency that the person on the sidewalk is going to hear. It is the observed frequency or the, it's the frequency that appears to be changing. V in the red is the velocity of the waves. So for all these sound things, uh, we need the velocity of sound. And the velocity of sound in air is 344 meters per second. So we're going to plug 344 into both of those spots. All right. Uh, VO is the velocity of the observer. So this is how fast the observer is moving. And VS is the velocity of the source. So it's measuring how fast the source of the sound is moving. So uh, be careful to note that VO and VS can be negative if the observer or the source are moving away. So if the observer is moving away, this VO would be negative. So you'd actually have V minus VO if the observer is moving away. If the source is moving away, then the VS here needs to be negative. So then you'd have V minus minus VS, which is V plus VS. 